Mrs. Sebastian Studio. I'm so excited that you're here with me. Today we're going to be looking at some paintings that artists have made of rooms and then we're going to apply one point perspective and create our own room. So without further ado, let's head on over to my studio desk. Today we're going to be talking about making your own one point perspective room. So to get you inspired, we have some famous artist rooms, their paintings, and then we have reproductions of what their paintings look like in real life. So for some of these rooms, interior decorators and maybe art historians went in and recreated these rooms in real life. And we're going to take a look at five of them. The first one here is by Grant Wood and it's the sunshine on the corner. And this would be a great little reading nook, wouldn't it? You might know Grant Wood better for doing American Gothic. And here's what the room would look like in real life. This is Kadinsky, my dining room. Always great splashes of colors in his paintings with a very loose brush stroke, giving it a real impressionist um, expressionism kind of a look. And then here's what his dining room might look like in real life. Roy Lichtenstein, famous for doing amazing pop art, comic book, Ben Day style. Ben Day refers to dots that you see in newsprint that was also used in comic strips. You can see it in the lampshade uh, and also in the wallpaper at, behind the sofa. Uh, and then this is what an interior decorator interpreted his painting into real life. This is Empress Alexandra's sitting room. And this is what it looks like in real life. And I suspect that this room was in existence long before it was painted and has not been changed since it was painted. So this one's probably as is. And then lastly, Vincent van Gogh, his bedroom in Arles, France, that he shared a house with Gauguin, painted most of his iconic artwork, including Starry Night. And this is what it looks like in real life. Things that you'll need for this lesson include a piece of paper, a pencil, a ruler, a straight edge, which you could make from a folded piece of paper if you don't have a ruler. This will give you a nice straight line to use. And of course, your imagination. All right, if you have a ruler that will go from one corner of your paper to an opposite corner, you could measure it to find the center point um, for me, I'm just going to put the center point somewhere near the middle. I think that'll be good enough for our project. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle or square around that center point. And it's great if it can be exact with wonderful 90 degree angles and uh, parallel lines that are equal length. but. You know, it's okay if you can't do that and just make it as approximate around that dot as you can. Then I'm gonna take the corner of that rectangle or square and that's going to go to the outside corners. All right, so now we have the beginnings of our room. We still need that vanishing point, so don't erase it. For our next step, we need to think about what we want in our room. I like to think of this as being the ultimate room that has everything you need and ever would want. So I'm gonna start off with a bed. Uh, and then I'm gonna kind of freehand this bed just a little bit, but I am gonna use some of those lines to kind of make it look like it's in 3D. So I just do the outside of the bed frame here. Um, I know probably about here and um, here will be sort of my mattress area. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring out this bed a little bit longer using the corner that it touched on the line. So it's lined up with the vanishing point too. And then I'm gonna bring this next one down and then this next one because that's where my mattress is I want to have a nice fluffy mattress all right and then I'm gonna bring this line across 
And then I'm gonna line up that part where it touches the line with the vanishing point in the middle too. And then all I have to do is make those lines go straight across. This line will come straight down. Make that line go straight across. Straight down. Still go straight down here till these meet and then go across. Now look here, um, so this is what happened. Now the bed is, isn't going to be touching the wall here anymore, so I need to make some modifications. So instead of bringing the line way out here, I need to make it so it's right there. And that's okay because you drew their lines lightly because we're still in the drawing uh, part of this. We're not to the part where we're ready to add color. And you will find that a lot of the time that will appear. I'm gonna erase the, if something isn't quite lining up, just go back and revise it. And now I've got a bed drawn in perspective. I can add a pillow or a series of pillows. I don't know if you ever watch those TV shows, but it seems like they always have a ton of pillows on the bed. May as well make mine really comfy. Uh, you can add a bedspread on here of a design of your choice. Uh, I'm just going to, and you know, maybe it's, some of it's not tucked in all the way, so maybe some of it'll be hanging down here. And that's okay. Um, if, if, this was a trundle bed. I could have little lines where that would maybe come out. You'd pull it out and then there'd be another bed there. Maybe there's just storage in here and I can pull out these and I can put items in it. More storage sounds great to me. So these will be drawers that come out and I can put additional items in it. Maybe games, stuffed animals, whatever you have a lot of in your house. <clears throat> All right, so next I want to have a nice table. So I'm going to kind of do the outline of a table here. And we're going to kind of work this the same way, where this point here will come out. And this one here will come out. All right, and then I know I have some legs in here, but I think I need to have a front of my table. So I can put items in that too. So I'm gonna go straight up and down. All right, we're gonna go across. Wow, that's a really big table. And then this would have to come way down low. So that probably means I need to make it a little bit shorter. I think that's pretty good. I may, I want a really nice big table because it's my studio. It's where I get to do artwork. just freehand so they fit in that space like a parallelogram. On that desk can be whatever you're interested in. Maybe I'm gonna have an artwork that I'm working on of a pet dog. For storing things. I might need a chair. 
the chair doesn't have to be drawn exactly in perspective because maybe it's not lined up with that point because chairs can turn because um, I know I'm sitting on a chair that can swivel on wheels and you know um, as long as it looks like I have a place I can sit on it I think that'll be good enough some little arms on my chairs too to rest my arms when they're tired and then you know I like to sometimes watch Bob Ross do his joy of painting on the television so I'm gonna go ahead and put a nice flat screen TV on the wall I'm going to do a line like so and then I'm gonna line up the top of that line with the vanishing point and the bottom of the line and make those lines like that. If I want to make it have a little bit more of a dimension because it's not super razor thin, I can put a little extra line that just goes straight out and down. And then maybe I will just do a quick little cartoon. He's wearing his overalls of Bob Ross. His painting on his easel and it's of a cabin in the woods and there's a little happy lake and mountains and happy little clouds he's got a paintbrush in his hand and maybe he's got his little squirrel friend on his shoulder today And so that's what I'm watching and then um, maybe I'll have a ceiling fan that'll come down so to do the ceiling fan I make two blades that look like this and then a blade that looks like that and maybe there'll be little lights in between it and they would spin uh, and I might even have um, a skylight in my room why not ha paint by the light of the stars those um, left and right lines lined up with the vanishing point the top and bottom are parallel with the edges of the paper and then usually that will go up we will line up that as well and then this line just goes straight across Maybe we'll have um, little stars up here twinkling. Uh, I, you know, I might have big windows back here, and because it's on that back part of that rectangle or square, they're just going to be normal. Lots of natural light. Maybe I'll have drapes that will be on the outside edge of it. There we go. Those will hang down in between. And then we'll just add some individual panes in there. Maybe I'll have um, wood or some sort of a design, maybe a, a, a tile. I would probably have those lines also all line up with my vanishing point.
did something like wood, I could stagger these lines randomly. They do need to go straight across though. And apparently I'm having a hard time with that. So bring out the ruler, my trusty friend. Yes. It needs to be parallel with the top and bottom edges. They will be further spaced apart the further down you go on the paper and they'll be closer together the further you go up. Just like our sidewalks in our 3D cities that I did. Maybe I decided I'm gonna put a rug underneath my chair so it doesn't scratch the floor. Got a little polka dot pattern on there. In honor of Mr. Hard, my school, because apparently she loves the polka dots. And who can blame her? They are wonderful. Well, I have room to put maybe a big painting on this wall. So we're going to line up that top and bottom edge with the vanishing point. And I'm going to make this an elaborate little picture frame. some people in the picture. All right, so I've got somebody who's sitting on the bed. just ran in. Wagging his little tail. Um, I think I'm done. So you can add your own touches, making it the best room ever. Um, oh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll have some of those happy little mountains in the background. Why not, said Bob Ross. And maybe I'll have a big sunset. And maybe I should go ahead and erase that vanishing point. Okay, I couldn't help myself. Okay, anyway, you go ahead and make yours. And I would love to see pictures of them sometime. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that lesson on how to draw a room and you too can draw your own fantasy room filled with all of the things that you love. For our interesting fact of the day, 
Um, believe it or not, people spend about 36% of their time every day in their bedrooms. I have my studio desk in my bedroom. I love to read in bed, and you probably have a lot of fun things you like to do too. Okay, so remember, um, always be kind to everyone you meet. Do something nice for someone in your house today. And remember, as always, keep making great art.